Rolls-Royce engine. Just said that I'm going to show you why it's my favourite engine. You look lovely. Could you, um, your hair's in a bit of a mess. So. All good? Yeah, when you're ready, mate. So now you've seen it run, let's talk about what we did before we got it going. We've gone back in time now. So the main thing you have to do, this engine's not brand new, it's not been used for a long, long time. It was dry stored for many years in my living room. And the engine before, uh, before it was packaged up was actually dyno. We have the sheet of that, which I'll show you here, and what date and everything it was done on. Anyway, so it hasn't run for a little while, a long while. So the main thing is to pre-oil the pump before we start turning the engine over. So this part goes to the oil filter, this is the oil filter, and then this is the pressure pipe up from the pump that goes into the oil filter around, back down that pipe, which then goes into the engine on the pressure side. There's where you get your oil pressure gauge and it goes off into the engine and does wonderful lubricating things. But the main thing is, I said around for a while, the oil pump is probably dry. So if we were to just fill the sump up in a minute, crank it over, that pump, if it's not primed, won't actually pump the oil around, which would then mean that the engine would be turning over with no oil pumping around and would seize it straight up. This engine is probably worth 20 grand, so the last thing we want to do is seize it straight up on test run. So what we always do is get a bit of oil like this, and literally prime the oil. Wet the pump. whistle. Yeah, wet the whistle, whatever you want to call it. Then what we shall do is, or what shall we have done? We took all the spark plugs out on the on the outside. So these engines actually are twin spark. They have two spark plugs per cylinder. You have an in mag and you have an out mag. I just did that the wrong way around. Um, but to lower the compression while we're just getting the oil around, we don't want to waste the batteries with it trying to compress. So we load the compression, take all the spark plugs out. The other thing we can do is while we're cranking it over, we actually can be checking for a spark. So we're gonna do two things at once. We're gonna be pre-oiling the engine before we even think about putting fuel in it, and we'll be checking for a spark. They're the two main uh, things that we need to focus about. Now, the magnetos are pretty simple things. This is one I made earlier. So the magneto is basically like a generator that creates its own electricity. And the reason was obviously back in the day, they didn't have ECUs and things like that. So they needed to come up with a way to create a powerful spark that could be sent to each spark plug at the right time. And they managed to do this with no electric whatsoever. They turn round and round motion. It generates electric and it also you can feel, I'm going to try and turn this, but basically as you turn this, you can feel each notch, each notch you can see there is another spark plug. So it goes around and all those points are a lead. So that is actually distributing the spark and creating the spark all in one, one foul swoop. There's two of these. So this one here, for example, is an exhaust mag, has EX right, on the top. On, let, let, let it focus, Jesus. There you go, EX. So that's exhaust mag. So that, this mag, when it's fitted, will be running all of these leads on the outside of the engine. This mag here is the in mag, and that will be running all the leads that are very hard to see on the inside of the V, which are incredibly difficult to get out of the ball egg. So that's why well, we've left them in. <laughs> we're, not, we're not playing with them today. The main thing that you need to look at on a magneto when you haven't ran it up for a long while is the points can stick. So this is the rotor arm that obviously distributes the spark, but I'm going to take that out so you can actually see the points. So this is the rotor arm. I've now took that out because I actually need it on this engine. But you, what you can see here is what I was trying to explain. These are the points. These are where it sparks. And I know this one sparks because I just turned it over by hand and electrocuted myself. And I love getting electrocuted. Genius. Not. In there, that's, it. that's where it sparks. That's, that's it, yeah. We shall show you this sparking in a minute on the drill. When they've stood for a little while, 
what generally happens is there'll be a little film of corrosion on these points and that happens on pretty much any car that has points and condensers and again magneto is the same so first thing i normally do with any centurion engine that hasn't run for a while i'll take the points off give them a little clean up not not too a little bit of fine sandpaper bang them back on and they should spark a tree then the next thing to do is clean the inside of the cap this is a brand new engine so to be honest they look like there's hardly any corrosion whatsoever Look, so that can go a light in there so we can definitely make that yeah out. so we can make that out so yeah. that can go straight back on so what we're going to do next is fill it with oil uh, and these engines are what's the word these engines are dry sumped or remote sump and what that basically means is because tanks were trying to have a low center of gravity obviously the engine needed to sit in the hull of the vehicle as low down as possible which didn't leave any room for the conventional sump that you'd usually see on a normal engine so what they did they put a flat sump on this and then they made it so the actual oil wasn't stored in the engine it was actually stored in a remote tank which is this this is actually a centurion uh, an original centurion tank or sump it's actually clean on the in uh, inside. So we're gonna fill this up with oil. And the usual grade of oil I use, it's over there, SCA 50, which is really, really thick. So we're gonna fill that up with oil in a second. That's gonna take ages. I'm not gonna film it, it's a bit boring. And then we're gonna pre-oil, finish pre-oiling that, put the hose back on. We'll then clean the points on the magneto. And the thing, next thing we'll do, we'll put the drill on here, which is a bit, it's a, it's a bit dodgy, I'm going to lie, but we're going to put our uh, Milwaukee drill on there. It doesn't matter because we did get it for free. Uh, we're going to spin the engine round on the Milwaukee drill because it really appreciates turning 12 cylinders round on a 27 litre petrol. So we're going to spin around on the drill to save the main batteries when we come to the actual initial start. And we're going to be looking for oil coming out of the return, which is here. So when we get oil returning back to the tank, I'll put a pipe to the tank, it's not just going to leak on the floor. I'm not here thinking. But when we know oil's come out of that, we know it's got oils all around the engine and all circulating. And then, the next thing we're going to do, and we learned this a couple of times with these engines, is the, the carburetors, there's two updraft Zenith carburetors. There's one here and there's one here. And the way these work is this, this carburetor here, basically, if you chop the engine in half where these ears are, this carburetor runs three cylinders this side, three that side, and this further one runs the other three at the front of the engine. And what tends to happen is there's a, like all carburetors, there's a thing called a fuel bulb. And what happens is that fuel, we am I calling it right? Is it a fuel bulb? Uh, yes. Well, no, float and bulb. The float, yeah. sorry. So it has, a, it has a, a float in it. So as the petrol comes in through these parts here, these little ticker pumps, suck the petrol out of the fuel tank, lift it up through here and it starts to bring the level of fuel up in the carburetor here now the idea of the float is once the once the petrol's reached the optimum amount what you don't want it to do is overfill the carb and then it starts pissing out everywhere so what the float does if you imagine on your toilet you have a thing called a well a bull cup that's the word well done so if, you, if you take your go into your toilet take your toilet to bits take the lid off you'll have your ball cock. So when, when you flush the toilet, the water goes down and the big plastic ball drops the bottom. When it fills up the water, the ball dries to the top and turns the tap off. So you don't essentially have to keep refilling the toilet manually. The same thing is happening inside your Rolls-Royce Meteor engine, but with petrol. And what tends to happen with these is the float tends to stick. Now what that means is, if you can go back to your toilet again, imagine if you grabbed your float in your toilet and held it down, what it would actually happen is it would overflow out the top of the toilet. Let's be honest, no one wants that. The same rule applies to your meteor engine. You don't want your float sticking. So there's a, there's a bolt here where we can get at the float. There's a bit of lock wire on it. So we're gonna take that off. We're gonna make sure that the float is actually working f freely on both carbs. So that one and that one. Move around the other side just to show. This one, yeah, and it has this annoying pipe that's in the way, yeah. which is Smack dead handy, dead handy. So we're going to make sure both floats are working before we even consider firing it up. Then, once, once, it, once all our tests are complete, once we've got oil flowing, once we've got sparks, and once the floats are ready, 
then we'll start it up and I'm sure it'll just start straight up. Oh, it'll run now, like a dream. They won't actually run properly because, as you can see, it doesn't have a flywheel. This is the starter motor, which seems to be in a bit of an odd place. That's because the starter motor is directly onto the crank. You don't get that on pretty much any other engine. Obviously, normally you have a flywheel with teeth around it, a flex plate or a ring gear, whatever you call it, and the starter motor turns the flywheel around. It doesn't have one on this. What this actually has is a great big clutch that should come in through this plate here. The clutch on the centre in tank weighs a quarter of a tonne, so that actually works as the engine's flywheel, which keeps the engine in balance. So it won't actually run right like this, and I can't actually run it for very long without the flywheel because it can it can put unwanted stress on the crank because it's not it's not got inertia. To hey, keep you're it. big work. words today, aren't we? I, I ought to get a scientific suit. To work. Oh, 100 percent. Thank you, Tom. Anyway, enough waffling. Whatever we're going to do next. Let's so we're going to clean the contacts on the points. This is a very delicate job. And I always end up losing that little clip, which is a pain in the backside. What you want is lots of crap there. So, I don't know whether you can see. Probably not. But that is, this is the, the point, and it just has, see that little bit of white? Yeah. You can't really see it, to be honest. Get Turn the, the light off, That's it, there you go. That's it, now put it out. Can you there see that, go. can you see that? That little tiny layer there? You see how I'm scra just scraping it off? Yep. That's all it is that stops it from sparking. You don't need to scratch it, you just need to it's a brand new point, you can see it, it's not burnt at all to clean all that off gently. Just puts a tiny film of non-conductive corrosion over it. Right, that one's nice. Now I've got to do what it sparks on the base here. Again, tiniest little bit of corrosion on that. This magneto would not have sparked just because of that. Now, the engine will run on one but they don't run properly. So, we'll make sure we've got all the spark we can get. As for timing, it should be bang on because we've never took it off. Right, and then you just fold that back on. Just want to remember, everything's very old, so you don't want to give it too much stick. And basically, I'll repeat the process for that one and the other side. This is okay, so we are now, points are cleaned either side, jack's on the drill, we're gonna now turn the engine over, any preservative oil should come out the spark plugs as we go, and we shall also see if we can get a spark. So, when you're ready, Jack, start slow, and then... Uh, start slow and speed up. Yeah. Like everything. Slow. Yeah, that's nice and slow. So the drill's now turning the engine over, but it's so slow that it's not enough to make it spark. I can go quicker. No, it's all right for now. I can feel in the hand, compression, air coming out the cylinders. Go a bit quicker. A bit quicker. Full speed. now we'll get another drill and we'll try again but it seemed to be going all right let's just see if oil 
has started. Yeah, looks like it. Just go slow for a start. Yeah, so now we've got definite oil circulation. I'm not too worried now for doing the actual run up. I've get Jack the job of cranking it over. He loves it because he's scared of sparks. It's not that, I'm scared of being electrocuted and being swept up. That's what I'm scared of. <laughs> so I've given him the job of being, basically, when you turn your car on, you've got a thing called a solenoid, which deals with the spark so no one gets electrocuted. Jack is the human solenoid for this experiment, or test. Right, so what we're gonna do, Jack's gonna crank the engine over now with Odyssey batteries, not a burnt out Milwaukee drill. I'm gonna then put the screwdriver against these contacts in here to see if we've got spark. Because just because I can't see it doesn't mean we don't have one because it's very light in here now. The workshop's all cladded and nice. Right, when you're ready, Jack. Yeah. Line her up. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so we now have sparks on all four points on the magnetos. The next thing to do is put the rotor arms back on, connect the caps back on, and then we're gonna check to make sure we got a spark at each spark plug. Start cranking. Okay, well, that might have been quite hard to see on film, but we'll see how it comes out when I actually edit the video. But they were in fact all sparking, so I'm now gonna take the spark plugs, put them back in the slots, do them all up, and then we're gonna move on to the floats. Let's check the floats. That's the float cover. You can probably see, just there is the actual float itself. It does feel a bit stuck. In fact, it's very stuck. So that should spring up when it's empty of fuel and it's not doing, which would mean this carburetor would flood almost definitely. There we go. Getting better now. So what you want to aim for is so when you push on it, she springs straight back up. Can you see that? Just like that. What I'm now going to do is prime the fuel up through the pipes into the carbs by using the manual prime. You can actually hear going in the carb if you want. You can actually see petrol splashing out of that one now. Now the fuel's primed up, you can see that the float is actually sunk to the bottom. The rod, there's when I lift it up, and it wants to go back down. Which means when that pin goes down, that basically stops the fuel, which comes in there. That pin goes down and blocks the fuel in to stop any more coming in. From, and that stops the carb from overflowing. When we first took this cap off, obviously this plunger was stuck at the top and it stayed at the top. So had we had just ignored that and filled it, which I've done in the past and I've now learned, the carb overflows and then there's a pipe down there that chucks the excess petrol out there, right by all the flames, which is not brilliant to be honest, not brilliant. Right, so we're gonna put those caps back on and then we're gonna give it a proper crank. Are you ready?
Is this camera running? Yeah. It'd be more likely to have an explosion there. Ready? Yeah, go for it. As we could see from the uh, videos that the engine was running well but we definitely got issues with these two and you can see this one's quite oily so what's probably happened that spark plug's probably got got sitted up silted up rather so we'll get that out clean that do the same with this one this one also a little bit wet all the others you see they've, they've actually dried out they're not they're not blowing any any moisture but these two are definitely damp the other side was running really good but as you can see, this side is running perfectly clean. All of them are in perfect condition. Dry as a bone. Dry as a bone. So we'll do some fettling. We'll probably get the aboroscope, the camera on a stick, and have a little look inside those two cylinders to just see if there's anything that's untoward. But I don't think it will. I think it just needs to, the rings will need to free up and we want to gradually build the temperature up on the engine. Obviously, we're running this with no water at the minute. We're only running up seconds at a time and letting it cool down slowly. We shall do some more on this before it goes in the vehicle. Obviously this is going to go in the FV4005. So stay tuned for some more videos of the engine. And also for those that have been wondering what Jack's been doing recently, he has actually been working very hard as usual and he has now skinned the entire workshop, the walls, and he's started to put Shelves up with tools, battery chargers, stuff that we use, nuts, bolts, washers, spanners, the whole way along the wall. So he has been very busy. We've still got loads more to do. Now we must get out of here because it's quite fumey and my eyes are hurting. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>